<laughs> Redo. Today I'm going to make a pineapple cake roll from a 1962 edition of Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. Then I'm going to do my own modern take, try both recipes, and see what I think. Let's get started. The recipe for the pineapple cake roll is kind of a wild ride. To start, it says to beat the egg yolks until thick and lemon colored. Next, I'm gonna just add the sugar gradually. Then it just says add vanilla. The recipe says to beat the egg whites till soft peaks form. Then gradually add the sugar. So kind of making a meringue here. I think that's good. Okay, so next up it says to fold the egg yolks into the egg whites. Whenever a recipe calls for you to fold, you wanna be really gentle. Make sure everything becomes incorporated without deflating it. Sift the cake flour, baking powder, and salt. Sifting the flour, this is another really good way to ensure that the batter is gonna be light. Fold this into the egg mixture. Next up is the filling for the jelly roll cake, which I've never seen done before. This is calling for the filling to get baked with the batter, which sounds like pretty good in theory. So first it's calling to drain the pineapple. It's pretty liquidy. Okay, so now that the pineapple is drained, it says to spread it on an ungreased pan. I have a feeling that the pineapple is actually gonna add like a lot of moisture to the cake. And next it says sprinkled pineapple with brown sugar. So now the batter goes over the pineapple mixture and then I just spread it out. Because the batter seems to have so many egg whites and feels really like meringue, I bet it'll be like pretty light and spongy. I think this is all set. When it comes out of the oven, it should spring back, be really light to the touch. You really don't wanna overbake this, so I'm gonna keep a careful eye on the oven. Okay, I'm all set up to take my jelly roll out. This process goes pretty quickly. It looks golden brown. It's got that springiness, like this is all going well so far. In order to prevent it from sticking, I'm going to put some powdered sugar just over this towel, which I know seems weird, but this is the trick. You need the towel to help kind of roll it into that classic shape. The recipe says to let this hang out for like two to three minutes, but that makes me very nervous. So I'm just gonna go ahead, loosen the edges and turn it out now. From my experience baking these in the past, I know that you really need the Swiss roll to be hot so that it easily comes out. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> Redo. Okay, I baked this a second time. Hopefully, second time's a charm. So because there's no parchment paper, I really need to work quickly. Okay, moment of truth. It kind of worked. <laughs> it mostly worked. Some of the pineapple is stuck, but I think this might be enough for a roll. Roll up, starting at narrow end. Wrap in sugared towel. Don't really need to worry about the powdered sugar. It's just gonna kind of dissolve right in there. And I just wanna kind of like really delicately roll it up. The idea of doing this in a towel is also to prevent the roll from cracking. Compared to other jelly roll cakes I've made, this just feels kind of wrong. Like it feels really, really wet and kind of like it's gonna collapse. Ooh, and it's so cracked. This is definitely not, not what it's supposed to look like. Now that it's totally wrapped up, I just need to let it cool to room temperature. I really hope this is gonna stay together. Okay, the pineapple roll has fully chilled. It's also like leaked. Grand reveal. In the world of cake rolls, I, I would call this a fail. <laughs> it's just so oh, wet. Wow, yeah, I mean, it should look like a proper, like there should be a proper roll in it. Maybe trimming the edges will help. Yeah, you can kind of see like a roll happening. I think that definitely helps. It kind of covers some of the cracks. I'm gonna get some whipped cream, maybe some maraschino cherries, and I think it's time for a taste test. Very pineapple-y. That is unexpected. I've honestly never had anything like it. It's hard to discern what is cake and what is pineapple. It all really kind of like tastes the same. I think the concept for this is really good. I love the idea that you could like 
bake it in one, but I think to really like be a successful jelly roll cake, you need another filling to kind of adhere it and make it stick together so it can be like a proper cake. I think there's just a bit too much moisture in here from the pineapple. I think I did the best job that I could and you know, I think there's something here. This is getting me really excited to think about like what I'm gonna make for my version of this, the modern take of this. Obviously it has to be pineapple centric. My initial thought is like pineapple upside down cake, but that also feels like a retro dessert, which like kind of defeats the purpose. Like some tropical kind of fruit dessert, something like pina colada-y. Oh, I've never tried this, but I think I could do pineapple slices in a galette, like a pineapple galette. I've never seen it done, but I don't see why it wouldn't be great. I'm gonna go set up and give it a try. For my take on this dessert, I'm gonna make a pineapple galette. I love making galettes. I love that they're inherently rustic. They come together quickly. You can really, you can make them sweet or savory. You can use whatever fruits in season. They're amazing. We're gonna start by making the dough. So first you add flour, salt, and I'm actually gonna add a little pepper, which I know sounds weird for like a sweet dessert, but just a little bit of pepper is just gonna add some like warmth and like this kind of spiciness without feeling too intense. I just need to pulse it a few times just so it gets combined. Next, add your unsalted butter. You could totally make the dough by hand, but making a food processor is really easy. It comes together so quickly. Just pulse it until the butter breaks down into the size of like lima beans. I'm also gonna add sour cream and cold water together. Adding sour cream to the crust just really ensures like a light, tender crust. It's really easy to roll out. I'm just gonna add it in slowly, just until the dough comes together. That's how easy it is to make dough. You could also do this for pie dough. It's basically the same thing, just a galette is free form. So just put it on your workstation, kind of quickly form it into a round. You don't really wanna like mash it together. It should just kind of like just barely stick together. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and let it chill for about an hour. Real trick is the longer you let your dough hydrate, actually the easier it's gonna be to roll out. So if you let this like sit in the fridge for three days, it would be perfect. Okay, my dough's been chilling. So to roll out dough, you just wanna sprinkle some flour on a clean surface. The flour is just to prevent it from sticking to the surface. I like to add a little on top too to prevent it from sticking to the rolling pin. It's always like comically hard at first, but it softens pretty quickly. I like to take my rolling pin and put it in the middle of the dough and then just press out like that. And then you just keep turning the dough and doing the same motion. This also helps keep it in like a circle. Whenever you're feeling the dough gets sticky, you can just add more flour. I'm gonna roll this out to about 14 inches, which I realize seems far off at this point, but it'll get there. You don't have to roll this into a perfect circle, but just trimming some of the excess off. I talked about how fickle this is can feel that the butter is already starting to melt. So I'm just gonna put this on a sheet pan, pop it back in the fridge while I make my caramel. Easy way to do this is just to kind of like fold it up. You can transfer it. But I'm gonna make a really easy, quick caramel. I was thinking about what flavor would go well with pineapple and I thought caramel might be nice. I mean, caramel makes like pretty much everything better. So I'm gonna try it. First, I'm gonna add the butter. For this purpose, I wanted a caramel that was like easily spreadable, that had kind of this like creaminess, lusciousness, so that's why I'm opting for this technique. Once the butter is melted, add the sugar, and then just stir to combine. It's really important not to let the caramel burn. So for this recipe, I'm gonna keep stirring. Some types of caramel, you don't stir at all, you just kind of twirl the pan. This one, you wanna stir. You can see that the color is slowly starting to darken. Looks like the sugar is like really separating, but like suddenly it's gonna come together and be like super smooth. So the sugar has started to dissolve and come together. You can see that it's looking like saucier. The butter is still separated, but suddenly it's gonna become a cohesive sauce. So once it comes together like this, I'm just gonna remove it from the heat and add the salt and some heavy cream. Whenever you add the heavy cream, it kind of bubbles up. You just need to stir really vigorously to make it smooth again. Okay, my caramel looks perfect. So this is gonna be the base of the galette. I'm gonna go get the crust and then assemble the galette. 
Okay, I'm just gonna add the caramel to the bottom of the galette to kind of work quickly before it totally uh, firms up. It doesn't need to go all the way to the outside because the dough is gonna fold over and like form that crust. I'm using canned pineapple, a little nod to the previous recipe. Could totally use fresh for this, but a little more time consuming. At this point, you need to work pretty quickly because again, the longer the dough is out of the fridge, the more the butter is gonna melt. To start, you just kind of take a piece, then fold all the way around. Again, the joy of a galette is that it's inherently rustic, so you really don't need to be too precious about this. I've got some egg wash here. Just gonna brush the sides, and that's just gonna add this like really pretty sheen. You can make an egg wash with an egg and water, or you could use heavy cream or milk. I've got some turbinado sugar. That's just like raw sugar. It's, you know, it's more crystally and, you know, bigger kind of chunks than regular granulated sugar. I'm just gonna put that on the edge of the crust. I'm gonna bake this for about an hour at 400 degrees. It's gonna be golden brown, beautiful. I can't wait to eat it. My galette is out of the oven and it looks so beautiful. I mean, look at that crust, it's perfect. And again, you can do this with basically any filling you want to. Caramel, it's on the bottom, it's got the pineapple on the top. I'm gonna cheat a little and doctor it up with some whipped cream, some kind of like boozy cherries. That looks amazing. Moment of truth. Mmm, that is so good. I love the combination of the caramel and the pineapple. I wish I had actually saved some caramel to like drizzle on top so it was coming from both sides, but it's so good. I will say the whipped cream and the cherries really kind of tie the whole thing together. Oftentimes like Sweet galettes have berries or stone fruit. And I really like that I use like the canned fruit that kind of paid homage to the pineapple cake roll from before. It's really, you know, like an, a real modern take on it. I think I'd make it again. I'm pretty into it. Let me know in the comments if you like pineapple, if you like pineapple desserts, and which one you would choose.